Hello everyone, Joel Tubman here from Golf Monthly and in this video we're taking a look at the best putters of 2020. Now I've broken this video down a little bit differently this time around, so I have 13 different ranges. I'm going to break them down into five different categories and I'm going to order them in order that I think is the most important when choosing a putter. So we've got the looks, the feel and sound, the roll, the forgiveness and the value. And as we go through each category, I'm going to eliminate two models and then that would leave me with three at the end that essentially be my top three and then I'm going to try and pick my favourite from those three. So at the end of this video, you will uh, have my verdict on my favourite putter of 2020. So do make sure you watch to the end. But it's worth pointing out that just because one of the putters is eliminated from one of the first categories doesn't mean it's the worst putter of 2020 and it may well excel in other areas that we will touch on later in the video. So um, it's not a question of ranking them as such, it's just my personal opinion on where putters excel and where maybe they fall down in order of preference. Obviously, logistically, it wasn't possible to test every single putter, but hopefully you'll agree this is a relatively nice uh, comparison in terms of the spread of different models and brands we've got on offer here. I tested them here on the beautiful putting green at Burley Park Golf Club. I've got it here to myself. Uh, I've got Pro V1X golf balls from Titleist and um, I'm not using any launch monitor data here so I just tested them in a variety of different putts. Try to keep it consistent with each model so uh, some straight putts uphill downhill left to right right to left and um, just to give myself a kind of fair assessment of each model as we went through the video. I mentioned earlier I've got 13 different ranges now these are all current 2020 ranges so they're either launched in 2020 or they were launched in the second half of 2019 if that makes sense so they're all models that you can buy this year so think it's about time we dive into the different categories and let's start with the looks of the best putters in 2020. Right, so what I'm kind of thinking about when I'm talking about the looks of a putter is how much alignment assistance there is on offer. Is it easy to set the face to my intended target line? But also, does it look good in the bag? Is it a putter that I'm going to be proud to own? There's a few winners and losers in this category. You know, starting with the winners, for me, I found the putters that were most easy to align would be the Odyssey Stroke Lab Black Number 10. That really long, thick, white sight line really worked for me. Obviously, all the mallets, because they are larger, generally will have more alignment assistance on offer, and therefore, all the mallets that we have on this test were pretty easy to align. Blades, less so, they've all got a single sight line in the flange, apart from the Ping Hepler, which has this just contrasting uh, kind of bronze section with the black section. I really like that alignment system. I think that's really effective. I really like the look of the Mizuno. I think the blue finish stands out really sharply against the green grass and it helps me align the face a bit easier. Those were kind of the ones that really stood out for me. In terms of the two putters that are falling at the first hurdle from the looks, it would be the TaylorMade Truss. And the other one you may be surprised for me to say is the Odyssey uh, Stroke Lab number 10 triple track. Now starting with the truss, uh, this is a model, obviously you can see it's very, very different on the eye. And while TaylorMade have done a pretty good job actually of kind of hiding this, this technology where the hosel connects with the head in two different points to stop deflection of the face and give you more forgiveness, I think it is a bit marmite. And while you shouldn't knock it till you try it and it does perform, and we'll come on to the performance of this putter later in this video, I think visually it is going to put some people off and I just found a little bit uncomfortable kind of looking down on that. And then coming on to the triple track, you know, there's no question this is an effective alignment system. It stands out really well and it will work for some golfers, especially if you combine it with a Chrome Soft triple track golf ball. You know, that combination will be really powerful and definitely help people um, start the ball online more often. But the more I looked at this triple track, the more I just kind of felt like it was too imposing. There was too much going on and actually it kind of cheapens the look of the putter a bit. And while this putter definitely did perform, you know, I actually just found it a bit distracting in the end. So you know, that's just my personal preference. Those are the two that fall down at the first hurdle, but uh, there's 11 left. And now we're going to move on to the feel and sound. Yeah, there was a standout winner for me in terms of the feel and sound. We'll come on to why uh, I've chosen this model in a second. But yeah, I think the, the thing with feel and sound, it's interesting. You have to kind of marry it up with the golf ball that you choose because you need to get that combination right, which is why for me, the Ping Hepler and the TaylorMade Spider S are the two models that are going to be eliminated at this stage because they are two very firm feeling putters. And when you combine that with the golf ball I play, which is the Titleist Pro V1X, you know, that combination didn't really work for me. I felt like the ball was shooting off too quickly. There is also the option of the Sigma 2 line, which is a much softer feeling putter range. So really think about the golf ball you play, because if you play a soft feeling golf ball, maybe 
you know, firm feeling putter like the Ping Hepler or the TaylorMade Spider S, that could be a combination that should really work for you. So um, definitely something to think about. You know, if you like a soft feeling putter in terms of the 13 ranges that we've got testing here today, I would say consider things like uh, the Mizuno M-Craft and the Odyssey options as well, whether it's the Toulon or the Stroke Lab options, they all feel pretty soft. And then the rest of the models are somewhere in between. And that's where I would want my putter to be. So, you know, not too soft, not too hard, somewhere in the middle. Yeah, but if I had to pick my favorite in terms of the feel and sound, it would unquestionably be the Scotty Cameron Special Select. Not only did this feel fantastic off the face, really pure, quite soft, but not too soft. There was still a little bit of a, a sounder impact there, got the ball rolling nicely but it just feels really well balanced really well made and it just flowed really really smoothly in my stroke and as a result I hold more than my fair share of putts with this Scotty Cameron Special Select. It does have adjustable weighting on the sole. Um, if you want to fine tune the feel, I've got the 10 gram weights here in this Fastback 1.5. Didn't feel the need to adjust those. Um, and the feel of the Pistolini grip as well, I really, really like. Even though it's quite thin, you were surprised that it wouldn't really match up with a relatively big head, but it just seemed to work really well for me. Um, it's a lovely shape. It's got a slight tackiness to it. Gave me really good, good control. So. Um, yeah, if out and out in terms of my favourites for feel and sound, it would be the Scotty Cameron Special Select. The two models that are falling at this hurdle are the Cleveland Frontline Elevado and the Evenroll ER10 Outback. We'll come on to some things I like about this putter shortly in this video, but while it was very accurate in terms of the roll and distance control, I found it to be quite dead off the face in that it really didn't give me the speed I was looking for. So I felt like I had to hit my putts a lot harder with this model, which I was surprised at given it's a mallet and there's a lot of real estate behind the face. I thought it would get the ball rolling pretty quickly, but just felt like I had to give it a bit more oomph on all different lengths of putts. So that was a bit of an adjustment um, that I had to make. And the Cleveland front line was kind of similar. It's got a, a bit of a, a ping sound, which I didn't really like. And again, had to give it a bit more oomph. It's got quite a deep milling here on the face. And while it was very stable, just didn't really roll the ball as well as, as I was hoping. And I found it a little bit difficult to align as well. You can see here, there's not much alignment assistance on offer. Obviously there are different shapes available, but there was kind of one standout performer in terms of the roll. Obviously they all roll the ball pretty well, um, but it really was the, all the Odyssey models, all the Odyssey models that have this um, micro hinge star insert. So the, the Stroke Lab Black 10 and the Triple Track as well. You know, this definitely stands out in terms of getting that ball to really hug the ground early. It gives you, for my, in my opinion, the best chance of holding out from short and mid range in terms of using a technology like this. It just feels like the Odyssey uh, Stroke Lab models gave me the best roll um, to help me hold more putts. Right, so next up we're talking about forgiveness, and this isn't a category I really apply an awful lot of weight to for me. I feel like most putters are pretty forgiving, um, but there, you know, there are some golfers that really want that stability from a club head. And obviously, if you choose a mallet style putter, you're naturally gonna get more forgiveness. And there were a few standout performers in terms of forgiveness, which we'll come on to, but first, talk about the two that are falling at this hurdle. Um, so we've got the Mizuno M-Craft and the Rife Riddler X. Um, Mizuno M-Craft, you know, I am a big fan of this putter range, don't get me wrong. This particular model has actually gone in my bag, I like it that much. But there's only three different shapes in the range, a couple of blades and a mid mallet. Um, so therefore there isn't really kind of a, a forgiving option and, and the stability, you know, while there is adjustable weighting here, so you could uh, opt for some heavier weights here to give you a bit more forgiveness in the heel and toe. You know, I've got the eight gram weights here, which come in standard. I prefer the feel of that on long putts. If you do strike it severely heel or toe off center, you do notice a bit of extra twisting there and you do lose a bit of distance, but not something I'm overly concerned about. But if forgiveness is your thing, maybe you would want to look elsewhere. And the other one that really kind of struggled with forgiveness was this Rife Riddler. Again, it's a blade, so it's not gonna be as forgiving as mid mallets or mallets, but really kind of lost out on speed and accuracy on long range uh, when you're making a longer swing and it's harder to hit the sweet spot. So those are the two that didn't quite work in terms of the forgiveness. There were a couple that stood out, you know, aside from obviously mallets being more forgiving, um, you've got the tailor-made truss here. You know, this is a blade, but I felt it gave me forgiveness levels that were close to a mallet. You know, this is definitely um, one of the most stable bladed options you can buy. Spider S also very forgiving with that tungsten back bar, really helping stabilize the face on slight mishits. 
The Ping Hepler models were also very user friendly, especially that Tomcat 14 model, and they're all adjustable for length from 32 to 36 inches, which should help golfers get the correct setup for them. The winner, if there was a winner in the forgiveness category, it would be um, the even roll ER10 Outback. Um, we've got these special grooves here, which essentially slow down centered hits and speed up off center hits. And also they're designed to tighten in the dispersion by making sure toe and heel strikes just kind of start a little bit further inwards, which means that your dispersion should be tighter. And I definitely found that in terms of, you know, the consistency of the distance and the accuracy, this even roll model was a standout performer for me. So if you're looking for out and out forgiveness from putter, definitely the even roll range for 2020 is the way to go. Yeah, the two that are falling at this hurdle are the Axis Rose 1, um, which is the most expensive putter on test at £449, and the Odyssey Toulon design. This is the Atlanta model, um, which comes in at £379. So two of the most expensive putters in the test. You know, don't get me wrong, I love the performance of this Odyssey Toulon. It's very, very well balanced, very, very well made. The stroke lab shaft definitely helps in terms of squaring the face and giving you more consistency and better feel. So yeah, that is a good option to try in all the Odyssey putters for 2020. Um, but for me, that is a lot of money for a putter that doesn't have a whole host of technology on it. And the Axis Row 1 Rose putter is a very, very unusual um, concept. You can see it actually hangs kind of toe up. Uh, that's because it's got this patented heel weight here, which is essentially designed to stop the putter from twisting. So it's basically a, a no torque putter. So it um, should be more consistent and more easy to square the face. But yeah, I didn't putt overly well with this putter. It is very different, difficult to get used to the kind of unusual visuals at a dress um, with this heel section sticking out in front of the face quite significantly. And it just didn't have the feel I was expecting for a putter that is so expensive. It's got quite a hollow sound to it. I don't know if you hear this, I'll knock a golf ball on it. But it's a very, very hollow sounding putter. It just didn't give me that solid feel that I was hoping for. It's got a very, very shallow milling on the face. As well, it's quite loud, tinny sound. I did get used to it, and I think if you invested in it, you would get used to it. It just didn't give me kind of the feel I was hoping for from a putter that is so expensive. So uh, they're the two that are falling there, but in terms of the best value on test in 2020, they're two standout winners for me. You know, first of all, Cleveland Frontline Elevado. You know, this is uh, comes in at 149 pounds, and it was surprisingly forgiving for me. This is, um, there's four different models. This is kind of the mid mallet option. Uh, feels very, very solid on off center hits, and I love the grip on it. It's got this kind of Lampkin uh, sink fit pistol grip. This is definitely one of the best grips on test for me. Uh, very, very tacky, probably one of the tackiest grips as well. Gave me a really nice hold of the club, and as a result, I felt like I hold um, my, more than my fair share of putts with this. Doesn't maybe have the kind of premium visuals of other models, but I think in terms of value, and the performance you get from this putter for 149 pounds is excellent. And then, but the, definitely the standout winner in terms of value is this Reif Riddler. This is just a classic kind of answer style blade. And I think it looks pretty nice actually. This comes in at 79.99, so it's the cheapest putter on test. I think it looks pretty smart. It's got some grooves on the face that definitely help roll the ball pretty well. And I putted surprisingly well with this. It's got a nice grip to it. It's quite a tacky, spongy style grip that does taper a little bit down to, towards the bottom, but it was the right shape for my hands and gave me a good hold on it and good control of the face. And while, yes, it doesn't quite have the solid feel and the forgiveness of other models, it performed pretty well for the price. And, you know, I think you're actually getting quite a lot of putter for your money with this Rife Riddler. In my opinion, it's the standout option. In third place, it is the Odyssey Stroke Lab number 10. Now this comes in a few different shapes. I think there's seven different shapes here. What I like about this putter is, we've talked about the roll of it, how it gave me really good roll, but it's just that simple but effective alignment system. You know, on all of the models, they've got quite a thick white sight line on it. And it's the Stroke Lab shaft system as well. This has definitely helped my putting considerably. You know, I went to an Odyssey a putter last year with this system in place. Squaring of the face seemed a bit more natural and it's definitely something I would recommend you try if you're looking for a change of fortune on the greens. And I think there's some good value on offer here. It comes in at 269 pounds, I think. In silver medal position is the uh, TaylorMade TP Collection Patina. This is the Soto model. I've got Dupage as well, which is a mallet style, but 
I haven't mentioned this putter yet, and that's because it doesn't really excel in any area. It's just really good in every area of performance. I, I love the look of it. It's kind of got this subtle bronze finish to it, which might fade over time. I guess time will tell on that. But this model just really, really suited my eye. Um, I love the grip on it. It's, uh, this is probably, along with the Cleveland, my favorite grip on test. So it's the Superstroke Pistol GTR 1.0. It's just got a really nice tacky feel to it. And I just putted surprisingly well with this. It feels solid but not too firm it rolls the ball really well it's got these grooves on the face that are angled at 45 degrees so it just helps the ball kind of roll nice and early it definitely delivered that it just gives you a more solid feel and definitely felt like this was um, one of the best overall packages in terms of you know looks feel forgiveness roll all those sorts of things this was one of my favorites and one of the reasons why i hold a lot of putts with this putter but um, unfortunately for the tailor made anyway uh, my favourite putter of 2020 is the Scotty Cameron Special Select. Now this comes in at £380, so I think it's the second most expensive option here. So yes, it's a lot of money, but for me, you're getting the best of everything with this putter. But that black sight line stands out really nicely from this satin finish. It looks really, really elegant, really, really smart. It's a putter you're going to be proud to own. It's very, very well balanced. I talked about the feel of it earlier, how it's definitely the best feeling putter on test. For me, whatever reason, it just gave me the best overall performance. So when you factor in all those different elements, there's no reason why I shouldn't crown the Scotty Cameron Special Select the best putter of 2020. So hopefully you found this video useful in terms of narrowing down your search to find a new putter in 2020. If you did like this video, make sure you click the like button. Um, but for now, from Burley Park Golf Club here in Stamford, it's goodbye from me. I'll see you next time.